Hey everybody, welcome to the 360 VR experience. This is the first time I've gotten this software. I'm, I'm your host, Primo, if you guys don't know. If you're on the screen right now and you're looking forward with the car, you can actually look back and you'll see me in the driver's seat. So what are we driving today? I'm driving my 2011 Hyundai Genesis 2 liter R-Spec. Uh, it, it's in white. Uh, but it's something I wanted to test out with this new VR experience here and see what it looked like when actually driving and kind of test it out. So I figured if I'm going to test it, I should probably test it on my own vehicle first and then kind of feel it out about how, you know, we want to move forward and working on balancing. But the thing is, is I love sharing these things with you guys so you can see it and uh, see what it's like. Like this is just such a cool thing to be able to share uh, driving around in a particular car so I figured why not start with you know my own little monstrosity here so um yeah this is something that we plan on doing on the site on a regular basis it didn't expect to be able to film it today the weather was really dialing in to say it's gonna rain it, it is gonna rain tomorrow but it gave me some time today to kind of what do you call it fill up the space and then, um, sorry, I got this guy pulling out. He's putting his hand up like I'm like, I got the right away, so I don't know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> but uh, but that thing is, is the, any opportunity I have to film, I'm going to take the chance to film. So I got a chance to have a really, I mean, like, look at this day today, man. It is amazing. The temp out right now is 62 degrees. Um, if you're wondering, I'm located in the New England area. So northern area, about I'd say about 40 minutes south of Boston. Uh, I'm, I, it's very, it's a nice centralized location for me. So it gives me the ability to go basically one way or the other. So Rhode Island isn't too far away. So if I want to go to Rhode Island or if I want to go to Newport or some of the nice museums down there that have some amazing vehicles, I have a chance to do that. I'm in the right area for it. Uh, the only problem that we have up here is obviously weather it gets cold and when it gets cold it's one of those times where it's like it gets cold and it gets cold fast and it won't let go it grips everything and the problem with the seasons that we have is everybody like november it starts getting cool and we're thinking oh you know what we're never gonna we're never gonna be able to get out or do anything so we're just gonna wrap it up and then you end up getting some warm days into december like this december we actually did get some really nice days but because a lot of people had put their cars up for the season that was pretty much the end of it so yeah but uh, I, I've got the windows rolled down a little bit I want to see if I can take advantage of kind of hearing what this is like this ha does have an aftermarket exhaust system on it per se uh, but it's got all the stuff that kind of came with the factory setup um, so in other words, if there's a resonator, there's a resonator there. If there's an exhaust, there's an exhaust there. Uh, it's just a little bit more. That's a red light. And that dude just ran it. <laughs> Nobody sees that light. How funny is that? That dude's looking over like, you guys uh, didn't see that, did you? And I'm like, no, we didn't even notice it. It's a weird light because it has, you can see it's no left turn or right. And it, see, it only has that yellow blink on it. So I'm glad I saw that, man. I was just following that guy. That would have went off bad. So one of the big things that I want to accomplish with doing these vehicles is being able to show you not only like some cool cars that you probably never had a chance to drive. Everybody says, you know, what's it like to drive this car or that car? Um, and that's going to open up a new series. Uh, we did have a name for it last time. I don't want to use it because um, it seems like every time I make something nice, somebody steals it or they try to steal it or they do whatever and you know what it's a really good experience for me because i'm going you know what that was a crap name in the first place so i'm going to drop that off at the corner and start with an even better name so now that you've stuck with your new name you're kind of stuck with it so congratulations the old name of the old show is yours and i'm going to start with a new and better one and i can't believe that nobody has it so <laughs> That's the weird thing. So I'm not even going to say it because somebody will jump the gun ahead of me and try to grab it before we start doing these. But the point of this is to be able to have the ability to see what it's like to drive 
different cars, like I said, that you've never had a chance to drive. Um, and it's not just exotic cars, which I think exotic cars are cool and fun, and that's your opportunity to really, you know, see what something like that would drive. But I also like the idea of, you know, getting us into some of the hot rod cars that we've never, ever, you know, like nobody's ever touched before. Nobody seems to want to show you kind of what it's like to have a low rider. And we did that video before with the other video, and I really did like it. But it's something that kind of, you, you can't kind of capture it from a, this straightforward kind of mindset thing. It's something that you really have to say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see it from a flat surface. And that's where I really started looking into this VR thing. And then by the time we started looking into it, we started seeing this concept of the meta and the idea of you know putting on a VR headset and saying, hey, I'm going to get in the car with uh, Primo here and we're going to take a drive. And that really was, I was like, well, we can do this? Like, this is going to be incredible. I can't wait. And I can actually do a mix. Like, there's going to be points where you can we can do a VR video so you're actually seeing parts of the video two-dimensionally we record it in really good high quality and then another one where you know we do just the VR and you can actually drive in and experience it and then kind of pop back to 2D that's something that a lot of these places are kind of working on being more streamlined with it but I'm happy enough right now that if I want to do that I can do it uh, and that's the thing is, is the point here is to be able to have options the point is to be able to say you know, hey, I'm going to do it this way one day and do it this way another. And, you know, we can still do the old show in, in the flat surface plane the way we did it before. And we can also do it like this in virtual reality. So, and so, oh, I forgot. So the upgrades on this car, because, I mean, this is kind of part of the show um, to get you broke in here. Oh, we got, I just took this right over here. And now I realize I'm going to have to get back over because there's construction here. <laughs> But so one of the things that we've done to this car is it has APR sway bars, HSD coilovers. By the way, HSD, you guys killed it. Like I, we had tested so much stuff with this car, and being able to have the HSD coils on it, I don't know, man. This is a heavy car, and it, the idea that a lot of the other coils kind of sagged and didn't work right, if you will. Uh, after a while, it's just like I said, it's because this car is so darn heavy that the problem occurs. So that was kind of the issue is, is we ended up getting in this and you know, oh, this is a heavy car. What do we do? You know, um, are we going straight here? What's going on? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna just everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Is there a back way in? No, don't do that. Mm. Watch out, construction on road ahead. You think? Let's take Broadway Raynham and Turnpike Street, Washington Street Easton. Uh, you know Continue what? straight for 11 minutes to Washington Street. Okay, we're gonna take a shortcut. <laughs> oh yeah, big time work down there. So, back road time. In a quarter of a mile. Yep, and that's what's going to do. It's right. going to turn us over here and get us around it all. All right, that's cool. And I didn't select it to say there was a ton of stuff there. All right, whatever. Is that going to... Mm, yeah, that's right at the end. Let's do that. I'm going to stick to it. Yeah, I still use Waze. A lot of you guys argue with me about Waze. And you know what? You're kind of right because Waze has not been my friend completely. But, uh, right on Britain Street. This is what it is. Okay. And then from that red light that that guy missed, I had to slam on my brakes and now my drink is on the floor. Turn left on Broadway. So yeah, APR, um, I have, what is it, AP, APC? I have carbon fiber, AP, I may think it's APR, but anyway, the carbon fiber trim around the bottom of it, you guys see, and I went to PD Design, Customs and Design, uh, over and I think it's Sharon. Uh, to do the roof, the carbon fiber roof, and we did a satin um, forged carbon feet. fiber look. Turn left. You gotta shut up. Um, we did a forged carbon look, and that came out amazing. And I want to do the rest of the carbon fiber that way, but I 
have to order from the kit company. I have enough to kind of do the side skirts, so I'm wondering if I want to just go ahead and do the side Turn skirts. Left on Broadway. Look at this magic. Look at this. I dodged the whole thing, but it's going to be really traffic -y. Yeah. No, I got clearance right there. That blue car. I'm going to have to jump in front of a truck, but I'm clear over here. Okay. You can hear my my, my bottle. <laughs> so, with the HSDs and the AP, the uh, struts and all that other stuff in it, I also got some Vistora Vistora wheels on it. Uh, this won't run anything lo like lower than 19 because of the standard the Brembo brakes that come with it. The R spec doesn't have the navigation. I don't even have cruise control, which I ordered it specifically because I got excited about that. But I, I think the R specs are fairly rare. But what happens is, is I have basically a very stiff suspension setup on this and you might actually hear it because the roads up here when they get plowed they are junk and you might actually hear it when I'm hitting stuff that like this area right here ready yeah there it is um, that's like a some kind of divot in the road that just stands out I don't know what it is with it but but yeah it's a very stiff ride it can get very rough i love it but it's not i can i can understand like if i stand back from the way i the kind of cars that i drive and then look at it i can see i guess the best way i know how to say it is it's not the ride for everybody <laughs> but that's the thing is is it's gonna it's fun i like this that's you know it's it's just fun um the biggest problem that I have with this car is it only has 227 horsepower so it does not have a lot of get up and go like people will look at this and kind of say hey let's race and um, I, I have no intentions of racing with this big heavy car that only makes 220 horsepower so what's the plan down the road to kind of get around that I think the goal is gonna be to get a um, Sick, sicky or sicko I don't know it's on my phone uh, makes a V8 kit for this uh, our state has really weird rules about it so I got to figure out what I can do and what I can't do uh, but I'm under the impression if I get an LS and get the original computer for it that I could in other words so it's it's identifying as that car and doing that um, I should be able to get it approved and be able to uh, use that vehicle. In other words, that engine and that setup here. And that'll be fine. I mean, it's hard to believe that this car is a 2011. I've got 120, was it 3,000 miles on it. Obviously have some aftermarket stuff that I've done on it. And it's still handling like, I mean, crazy. It just, it's, um... We really haven't even had, we've had like probably one or two issues with it. Um, the stuff has happened now, but it started happening, I want to say the first time I ever said, we have a problem that needs to be fixed, was at about 115,000 miles. And that was the weird thing. Like, I never had a car, I had a, we had a Celica GTS, and that car had an instant, we had it probably a couple days. And it had an issue with it so and that's the thing is the beauty of having this from brand new so it's a one owner car um, and being able to say hey check it out we you know no problems <laughs> and that's few I, I would say no cars that I've ever had have ever had that I, mean, I haven't owned a ton of cars from brand new per se um, but everything I've ever owned even from used with like you know say 15,000 miles would probably be the leanest. I like getting them at 20,000 miles because that's the breaking point for any like daily driver style vehicle. But yeah, nothing I've ever bought like that has ever come to me with, you know, oh, do you have any problems? No, nope, no problems whatsoever. Like they've always had some little issue. And even with this, so when I got it, I got to the end of the warranty on it, which is when we put the, um, the aftermarket wheels on it. And then after that, I said, you know what? It's handling that really well, so let's go ahead and get some coils. We went through two or three sets of coils. Um, and, and I had, I really liked the companies that I worked with. That's the thing is, is I like HST, but it's the car that's the issue, not the 
companies that are offering the coils. Um, there are some coil companies out there I wouldn't work with. I'm not going to say names. Um, I, if you've done coils at all, I'm sure you know some of those off the top of your head. Uh, my thing is, is when it comes to coils, just spend the money. Um, but yeah, so I put the coils on. Didn't have any problems there. You know, everybody's like, you put coals on, stuff starts breaking, and it's true. Like, you start shaking stuff loose. But I had kept up with the maintenance on it. I don't like anything on the car that has rust. I am not the expert of keeping it clean, so please don't beat me up. I think the ceramic coat that it has on it right now is probably getting close to the end of its lifetime, so it is what it is. But I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to complain too much about it. Like, I've kept up on everything. I just haven't had time to clean it because I, you know, if you, most people go to an event. I'm the one that's kind of putting stuff on. So it makes it very difficult to be able to film, coordinate stuff, and then say, oh, what are you doing next? You know what I mean? Like, okay, well, I got, I got time in the evening between the 17th. Like, I, right now, in two hours... I'm going to start something that's going to last me all weekend. So I'll start from, what is it, 5 p.m. today, um, getting, getting bar booked up at 3. So I'll start the process at 3. And then by 5 o'clock, it'll almost be going nonstop from 5 o'clock till Sunday at probably about 8 o'clock. So, sorry, I don't have time to wash the car or keep up with it all the time. But I'm trying my best to keep all the other stuff working so once we get that stuff you know you kept up with it i felt it was a lot easier to have the car be able to drive better and it took upgrades so i just kind of did things piecemeal from here to there and i wasn't looking for like you know big turbo blah 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 stuff that would kind of give it engine codes or give it problems with the flash and that kind of stuff i just did things real simple and uh and it worked out really well so that's, that's, I think, why it lasted as long as it has. And, I mean, right now I'm getting probably, was it 20 miles to the gallon, which it should be around 24, I think. But a lot of back roads, I think, lower that. So I think on average right now, when I first drove it, it was 27 to 30 miles per gallon. I'd say right now, highway-wise, it's doing anywhere from 24, maybe 26 on a good day. But it would be very tough. That would be a whole day of just highway driving to get it to go that well. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, 20 to 22, I'm very happy with that. So I'm not too worried about the gas prices. It also has um, an adjusting fuel curve. So if I want to put 93 octane in it, I can, which is great. Um, but it, it'll run on 87. So whatever octane I want to throw in it, it'll work. So that's good. So you might be wondering why I'm riding a little bit, um, I don't know, conservative. I'm not really kicking it today. Um, is one thing is just the idea of it being recorded 3D <laughs> um, and being able to get, you know what I mean, just to get an idea or feel of what it's like to see all around it. Um, this is, like I said, this is something new. I'm not sure that anybody does this. I know that YouTube supports it and has supported for like five years and it really baffles me that I haven't seen any of this stuff. And the idea of being able to put it out and just say, hey, you know what, let's check this out. I think that's a big deal. So maybe somebody else does it. I don't know. It just, you never see it. You know what I mean? But yeah, we'll use this opportunity to kind of put that platform out. So do I have... 1,000 feet. Oh. Keep left to Washington Street. Yes, ma'am. All right, so... What, I do have some plans down the road. Some people have asked me what, you know, what do you want for a car? Uh, and I usually kind of keep my stuff tight to my chest. We have worked on a couple of, uh, we have worked on a couple of projects with like custom creations to uh, get some word out from some some of the cars that they're going to be interesting. Yeah, it, 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 um, miles. They're going to be unveiling right on Plymouth Drive. down the road here, so you can see some posts I made with that. I don't want that stuff to be secret. I want you guys to see it. I want you to be able to pay attention to it, to understand what it's about, like what's going on with it. Um, those things are just awesome. You know what I mean? But the, the, I, I like my 944 Turbo. I'm into it. I'm sure we're going to do a video like this with it down the road. 
but I really have to say what I want to do is I want to do a Cayman. I am dying to do a Cayman. Um, the first complaint was, well, it's only a two-seater, and, you know, you have other people. You know what? I've been driving two-seaters forever. The back seats, even on this thing, is, I mean, like, nobody can drive in it. I mean, if I put too much weight on the suspension, it's it's an issue. Um, this isn't my transporter car, if you will. Um, I had I had a transporter car, um, and I kind of defaulted back to the truck on it because I like the truck. Um, I'd like to get a transporter car. I have my eyes on something I'd probably use if I was going to. Um, but I don't want to think about that so much. I want to think about what is going to get me to events and what's going to make me have fun. And a lot of people were like saying, hey, let's go big. Let's go bigger or do something huge. Or... The problem with those things is I can't really... I, it's it's too much upkeep. Like with the Cayman, it's kind of the middle ground. If I want to wide body it, I can. If I want to go up in wheel size, if I want to do crazy stuff with it, I can. I don't feel like tearing it apart. That 944, I can't do anything to it. it it's and I'm never going to be able to do anything to it because it's a Turn right on it's a nice Drive. car. You know what I mean? It's it's a car that you know is is a collector piece. It's from '86. Uh, bug flu in my ear or something but uh it's a 1986 it's in perfect condition uh ac still works like just crazy stuff that that thing will do uh and it puts me in a position where i'm like you know i'm gonna do some of the stuff to it i am gonna drive it a little bit maybe i'll keep it and collect it or whatever but if you ask me what i want to get the next big car has to be a uh it has to be a cayman and I think the Cayman or Cayman R would be nice. I have never, I've seen one Cayman R when they first, first, first came out. That car didn't last long in inventory at all. Right it was a green, drive. it was a green one too. So like that car was perfect. All right, so I'm almost at my destination here. As you can see, like, you'll arrive at wasn't too automotive. bad to have a car lowered. Like I think it's 1.75 or 1.6 inches I have it lowered. And I am pulling in here at Function Automotive where I always beat up poor Chris. Your and I know you guys all, a lot of you guys that are local to me know about Chris, but I'm going to show off some of the VR stuff to him so you can see what it's like. And uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe you can get some cars from here. He's got a lot of skylines in the area, so we'll see what's up. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we're going to have some stuff down the road and we will talk to you then. Welcome to the VR experience.